We have seen so many AI IDs on this channel, like Pear AI, Cursor, and Windsurf. Plus, we've showcased many others, but we have gotten another one that we're going to be showcasing throughout today's video, and it's called Trey. But this one is 100% free, and it is open source. Trey is an adaptive AI IDE that transforms how you work, collaborating with you to run faster. This dynamic collaboration is going to ensure each task is handled by the most suitable agent, which is going to maximize your productivity. It's very similar to Cursor and Windsurf with its very own chat interface built into the IDE that will work alongside with you for development. You can have it so that it has full contextual understanding of your code base. You have small features like uploading docs and images, autocomplete and autonomous agent mode, and so much more. It's like a combination of Cursor's Agentic Composer feature with Windsurf's Cascade feature. And on top of that, they give you access to Claude 3.5 Sonnet completely for free. But I will say, I just wanted to give you a heads up because last time I made a video on a 100% open source tool like Aid, it ended up switching to a pricing structure maybe because it got a lot of attention from the YouTube channel or from other media sources. So just keep that in mind, these companies tend to switch up quite quickly and I just wanted to give you a fair warning. Some cool features of part of Trey is that it has a Trey Builder feature and this is something that mimics Cascade which is Windsurf's chat interface. Essentially, it's a chat interface for you to build alongside the AI agents and in this case, they had used it so that Trey would build out a Tower of Hanoi game and like I said before, you get the ability to power the AI agents within Thropic's Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model completely for free, but you also get flexibility to use other models. But what's also nice is that they have multilingual support, which is a great another add-on. Before we get started with today's video, allow me to introduce to you the biggest AI event of this year, the NVIDIA GTC 2025 conference. From March 17th to the 21st, you can join in person in San Jose or attend virtually for free to experience the latest breakthroughs in AI, whether that's with accelerated computing or generative AI and so many other different types of topics. This is something that you can experience within this conference. What's nice is that you have the flexibility to join different types of sessions throughout the different days of the conference from the 16th all the way to the 21st. One of the sessions that I'll be attending is the Generative AI Conference session where I'm going to be learning about a lot of different aspects about AI agents, deploying them, and so many other practices related to Generative AI. Another topic that will interest me is the conversational AI sessions where you're going to be able to learn how to accelerate the full pipeline from multilingual speech recognition and translation to generative AI and speech synthesis. But essentially, whether you're a developer, a researcher, or just curious about AI, this is the must attend event of the year. So with that thought, don't miss out and register now with the link in the description below and be a part of the GTC conference that NVIDIA is hosting. Trey Builder also has a feature for multimodality where Trey accurately understands image uploads as well as other file types so that you can easily upload anything and you can have it so that maybe if you were to upload a UI design, you would be able to get the code replicated for it. And what's crazy is that Windsurf just recently introduced an idea like this which is only accessible to paid plan members, whereas in this case, it's completely for free. Trey can also analyze your entire code base using insights from your editor as well as your terminal, both to understand your workflow. So you have a good contextual uh, upload feature within the chat builder, and essentially it will be able to use its memory feature to provide context for future generation. Another feature is that Trey expands your code in real time where it can predict your edits and applies changes automatically using autocomplete. So this is something that is jam packed with a lot of different AI features that mimics Windsurf as well as Cursor's uh, agentic AI IDE. But now let's go ahead and showcase Trey further in detail. I want you to go over to Trey.ai. I'll leave all the links in the description below so that you can easily get started. 
and once you're here you can simply go ahead and click on this button which will go ahead and install it for your operating system it detected i'm using windows so it's saying download for windows so i simply clicked on it and then i'm going to go ahead and install using the installer that it, it had just downloaded then go ahead and open up tray and then click on get started this is where you can configure your theme and then your language display once that is done you can then also import configurations from vs code so i'm going to go ahead and actually do this because i like all the settings that i have within vs code to be implemented into this new ide and once that is done you can then go ahead and click on the install tray command and you can then go ahead you can either log in or you can go ahead and skip and then this will open up the tray id and there we go this is the first look of tray ai now i'm sorry i should have clarified this before but you can go ahead and sign up with an account with tray so that you can use their builder for free this is the main dashboard of your ide you want to go ahead and open up any folder or you can keep this the same as we build through something as an example but essentially for me i have opened up a folder and you can see that you have a good visualization of your folder as well as you have the ability to clone git repositories here you have all your basic functionalities that you would see from vs code you have your extension store that you can access but now the main thing is the chat mode as well as the builder so the builder mode is where you can go ahead and request it to build out a project and this will essentially have it so that it could even take your context like your code your file as well as your folder you can especially go ahead and tag in multiple files for it to provide context but you can also upload an image and then you can select the cloud 3.5 sonnet model for it to work on building out something to showcase the chat you would want to use this more specifically for asking questions so in this case i had provided my whole workspace as context and in this case it is using all the different files to read through and it will actually save that context so that it could also provide uh, future context for future generation as it has an inbuilt memory system. So in this case, it is working on implementing a suggestion for all the files. So if there's something that you like, what you can do is you can simply go ahead and click on accept. You can also have it so that you can copy it, insert it into the cursor, as well as adding it to a new file. So you can basically accept all the changes to what you would like and you also have the functionality to make this fully autonomous by going over to the settings and changing the ability to make it fully autonomous without you even intervening what's also nice is that you have the ability for inline edits and you can basically go over and highlight something and click on edit and you can even say something like can you go ahead and debug this for me please and then you can go ahead and send this in and then you can see that the chat interface is going to now be taking in the question so the ai agents are going to work on finding out a solution for debugging this particular snippet of code you can also view all the different edits that need to be made to all the files so that you can easily go ahead and accept it now let's go over to the builder and this is where i'm requesting it to build out a shopify clone and this is based off the image that i provided it Essentially, this is the UX of Spotify, which is a streaming service for music. And I'm going to go ahead and have it clone this out. So you can see that it is working on generating all the steps necessary for this. Now, I got to say, this is such a super helpful feature. Say if you're having an error within the terminal, you can go ahead and you can then send in that terminal error and then it will provide you a solution that you can run to fix it. In this case, you can see it was able to provide the right code. But now we're going to go ahead and install the React web app. And then once it has finished creating the template of the app, we're going to go ahead into the web UI and then create the React app. Now, after it has finished creating the template, it's going to go ahead and install the necessary dependencies. And you can see it is installing all the necessary packages that it wants to replicate Spotify. And there you go. It was able to fully finish developing the front end of this uh, spotify clone obviously it's not going to have all the different placeholders because obviously it can't replicate and put in copyrighted content but it was able to code out all the functionalities you can go ahead and then you can design the different music players that you can click into to play the music within this spotify clone but obviously this is a great start forward
So to fix that concern I had, I simply had went along to ask it, could you please add more uh, placeholders? And you can see that we have all the daily mixes that Spotify has, the recently played, as well as your top mixes. So this was a really cool thing that it was capable of coding out. And essentially, I didn't even write one single line of code. It was just one single prompt sent in to fully develop this replica of a Spotify app, which is just insane. Now, in my opinion, this is definitely a smoother ID than some of the other ones that are out there. It's super intuitive and it's easily to use. And it's something that I definitely recommend that you try out, especially being free and 100% open source. I definitely recommend you take a look at it with all the links in the description below. This is not a paid uh, sponsorship, but it's just something that was pretty new and I definitely wanted to showcase it on the channel. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletter so that you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. Follow me on the Patreon to access our private Discord. Follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please take a look at our previous content so that you can stay up to date with whatever is happening in the world of AI. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.